Well, praise the Lord, and we welcome you to the Revival Channel. We welcome you today, and we know that God is up to something mighty in the Holy Spirit. He's working behind the scenes. Jesus is my healer and my miracle worker. Jesus is my healer, and he's your healer. Amen. He's a healer for your family. He's a healer for, for your marriage. He's a healer for your finances. Jesus is our deliverer. Amen. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful today that you've tuned in, and I know God has a special blessing and a special word for you today that will encourage you and lift you up. Praise God. Uh, Jesus is coming soon. In fact, that's the next major event that will take place on the face of this earth is the coming of Jesus. Amen. And in the early church 2,000 years ago, they had a favorite saying right after Christ went back, you know, was crucified on the cross and, and uh, they were all excited about Jesus coming and going. And you know what? They agreed to one another in the early church with these words. Jesus is coming soon. They shook, shook one another's hands and said, Jesus is coming soon. Hey, if they did that 2,000 years ago, how much closer are we today to the coming of Jesus? Amen? Amen. We're so much closer, 2,000 years closer. And Jesus will soon come. Praise God. And so the message today that God's put on my heart is the battle is the Lord's. How many of you know the battle is the Lord's? Amen. Whatever test and trial you're going through, thank God you're going to come through it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so these tests and trials are real. But you are going to come through it, praise God. The Lord said he will bring you through. He'll bring you through. Praise God. He'll bring you through the waters and, and he, he'll bring you through the fire. Can you say amen? amen? The reason he said the word through is you're not going to stuck in it. You're not going to get stuck in the fire. You're not going to drown in the water because Jesus is going to bring you through it. Praise God. Amen. And uh, God's going to cause us to overcome all of our failures and turn our failures into successes. Amen. He's going to make you a success and not a failure. He's going to turn your heartbreak into healing. Some of you had a lot of heartbreaks, but God's going to, going to cause mighty healing to come. And he's going to, he's going to turn your sadness uh, into joy. It's not God's will for you to have sad days. That's the devil's will. God's will is for you to have days of joy, full of the Holy Ghost, and shout, and, and be happy. Say amen. So uh, be excited today, praise God, because Jesus is Lord, and he's the master. And so he's going to turn all of our sad days into glad days. And uh, he's going to turn your lack into an abundance. There's a lot of people today saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Uh, but the battle is the Lord's. And he's going to uh, give you uh, that prosperity. He's going to give you that abundance that you have need of in this hour. And so he's going to turn your lack and your, your limitation into being unlimited. And you'll have plenty, praise God, for the journey ahead to pay all your bills uh, he's a supernatural God that's going to provide supernaturally for you. And uh, because, of, uh, because of faith, the gift of faith is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Because of that gift, uh, the gift of faith and the working of miracles. God begins to work a miracle in our life through the gift of faith and because we believe and then he turns that gift uh, into a financial miracle also. And you see, if we get if we get this, uh, get a hold of the gift uh, of healing, you know, and, and, and the gift of, uh, of uh, finance and the gift of faith. You see, the faith gift is one of the most wonderful gifts, and I ask God to give me the, the gift of faith. Because you know what? I know with faith and miracles we can do anything. And so I've asked God for the gift of faith, and he has, and he has put that gift upon me and that healing in my hands. As I go around the world in over 73 nations, God uses me to pray for people and they get instantly healed, praise God. But the gift of faith, amen, is a wonderful gift because if you can get a hold of the gift of faith, my friend, if you can get a hold of the gift of faith through the Holy Ghost, that gift will give you, amen, it will give you, amen, a gift 
of finance. Praise God. It will cause God to cause finances to come on you. It's called a supernatural, supernatural gift, the gift of faith. And if you get a hold of the supernatural gift of faith, then you, praise God with that gift in your life of faith, pretty soon that will, praise God, it, it will activate that gift of, of financial miracles. Praise God. And all of a sudden, because you have the gift of faith, and working of miracles, all of a sudden finances will begin to come from the left and the right, the north and the south, and, and become from all over, praise God. That's what God wants to do. Can you say amen? Amen. And so, praise God. The Lord will help us all, praise God. And so, supernatural, supernatural faith will cause supernatural finances. And that's what we need today. We need to know that God's going to give us a supernatural financial breakthrough in these trying hours, because these are trying times, and we need, we need God's help. We need to stay where the rain is falling. Not a flood, but we need, not a drought, but we need the rain of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. And so, God wants to help us in these hours, and there's a time of reaping that has arrived for you and your family. You've been, you've been sowing, but now's the time of reaping. Can you say amen? It's a time to reap what you have sown, and uh, we need to cry out because the drought is over. You need to shout it and sing it, and to the heavens that my God reigns, and he is a miracle worker. And tragedies will turn around and turn into blessings. So many people say, I've had this tragedy in my life, and I've gone through so many things. But let me tell you, God will take your tragedy and, praise God, turn it into a mighty blessing for you. He will turn it into a miracle. Can you say amen? amen. In Exodus 34 and 10, the Lord said, I will do great things that I have never done before anywhere on earth. I'll do it for you. God said, I'm going to do great things that I've never done before. So God's going to show you favor, favor. Uh, uh, extraordinary favor, praise God. Not just ordinary, but out of the ordinary. He's going to give us favor, going to give us blessings that we've never had before. Can you say amen? And I feel today is a great day to know that the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. And uh, as I, uh, I look into the word of the Lord, uh, I found that uh, David, David and Goliath is a great story. You know, it's a great story. In Samuel, praise God. First Samuel 17. What a great story. If you want to turn there, First Samuel 17. And I, I want to read some of this to you because it's a very rich word, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. How that, how that God wants to uh, give us victory in every battle that we go through, praise God. And so the battle is the Lord. And so First Samuel 17 and verse 37, David said... Uh, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and put in helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he was swayed to go. And he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had in the script, and a sling was in his hand and drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a, a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, uh, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. You know, uh, people don't understand when God is with you and his power is with you and how mighty things are going to be, praise God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. And I'll give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host 
of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God in this world that's real and true and living. Can you say amen? And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, not with sword and spear, not the way you think God's going to do it, but the Bible said the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. I want you to know today that when God says something, it's going to come to pass. Praise God. And it came to pass. You know why it came? It came to pass. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, and there was no sword in the hand of David. Let me tell you, there's a power, there's a power in the anointing of the Holy Ghost that many don't understand. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his, took his sword and drew it, and the shriek thereof, and he slew him and cut off his head uh, therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. I said they ran because their champion, the head man that they were following, uh, they found out that he wasn't as big and mighty as he thought he was. And so we need to understand today that God is a mighty God, and he's a mighty God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so... God one day, he, he spoke to me and gave me uh, some information. And he said to me, I want you to tell my church this. And so I want to tell those listening by television today what God revealed to me. And that is that the battle is the Lord's. And that is that so many times we just, we try to, we try to fight the devil ourselves, But we need to turn the battle over to God. And so, you know, give it to God, whatever is wrong in your life. You know, Jesus is right for whatever is wrong in your life. Jesus is right. And so what the Lord revealed to me is that uh, this stone, you know, how this stone went. David, you know, he, he just, he took these five smooth stones out of the brook as he was going up the mountain to fight the Goliath. He reached down, and I imagine that's where he wrote the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You see, the 23rd Psalm is so beautiful. And we need, we need to understand that as the Lord went with David there, just a young man, God, you know, God uses young people. And so what God revealed to me as he, he went to the top of that hill, here's David, he went to the top of the hill to fight the battle, but he said, Lord, the battle is yours. And so... You know what he did? He took the old-fashioned slingshot, and he began to take one of those stones. You know, he, he had five stones. You know, there was, uh, you know, Goliath, you know, he had all those brothers there, so he had a stone for all the extra brothers. You know, he came prepared. He was ready for the battle, praise God. And so he began to sling that in the old-fashioned slingshot. He began to sling it around. And you know what? I want you to understand what God revealed to me. And it's good for everybody listening today to understand there is only one soft spot in all your problems, in all your giants that are coming at you. There's not two or three ways of killing them. There's only one. And God has the secret to bring down your enemy. And that was what God revealed to me. I have the secret. I know where the secret spot is. And in that giant, there was only one place to kill him. And that was between the eyes and the forehead. And only God knew where to let the stone go that would kill that big giant. And it had to hit him in the soft spot. And as soon as the stone went, the Holy Spirit it carried it. The Holy Spirit carried it. And where did it hit? Not here or there. It hit the soft spot. Boop! That's the only place it can kill the giant. Your problem has a soft spot in it. You don't know about it yet. You say, but I got this big financial problem. Well, there's a soft spot in it. There's a way that you're going to win. And you've got all these problems. That I don't know how I'm going to overcome this, Brother Jerry. It's so bad. And I got these health problems. 
Yeah, but there's one soft spot. And God knows where it is. God knows how to tap in and give you that health today. And he has the healing for your cancer, whatever cancer, whatever tumor. And God will cause that to shrink up and disappear. He'll cause all of it. And so, praise God. Just curse the cancer. If you say, I have cancer. The doctor said, I have this cancer. Wherever it is in your body, just curse it. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I curse the spirit of cancer off of me. I curse you at the roots. I curse cancer at the roots. And so when you begin to curse it at the roots, it's like Jesus did as he cursed the fig tree because there was no fruit on it. He cursed it at the roots. And when he went out of town, the Bible said when he came back the next morning that already the fig tree had dried up from the roots. You know why? Because Jesus cursed it. And what Jesus curses, it can't live. And when Jesus curses your cancer, it's going to fall off. In the name of Jesus, you're going to get up as a healed individual because by his stripes I'm healed. Praise God. And we're healed today by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is a lie. I said the devil is a liar. And we are, we are healed by his stripes. We are healed. Praise God. We're healed by Jesus' stripes. Jesus is my healer. Praise God. And the Bible said, Exodus 15, 26 in your Bible. For I am the Lord who heals you. Who heals you? Jesus heals you, praise God. Exodus 23, 25. As I serve the Lord my God, he will bless my bread and my water, and he will take sickness away from the midst of me. You do know Jesus is your healer. He's your doctor. He's your lawyer. He's your advocate. He's your everything. And so Jesus is my healer, praise God. And then he said in Psalms 103, verse 3, Hallelujah, this is beautiful. My Lord God forgives all my iniquities and sins and heals all my diseases. Praise God. He heals them all. He heals all of our diseases and all of our sicknesses. And he takes all of our sins and forgives all of our sins because we're all sinners. And without him, we would not make it. But because he's forgiven our sins. You know, if you repent, that Jesus will turn all that stuff that's coming towards you, all that stuff that's coming to harm you, he'll turn it around in the middle of the road and it'll go back where it came from. If you'll just stop and repent and say, Lord, I repent of my sins, then all that ugly stuff is coming towards you. God will have mercy on you. Did you know that God's mercies are brand new every morning? Yeah. Every morning. He erases, he has a great big eraser. He erases all the bad stuff we done yesterday and all this stuff. He erases it. And by his stripes we are healed. Can you say amen? amen? And so the word of the Lord is a true word, and I love his word. Hallelujah today. Psalm 118 and verse 17. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Don't you want to live and declare the works of the Lord? By his stripes we are healed. You know, Jesus took the stripes, 39 stripes in his body. I want you to imagine this. Didn't he already know there's only 39 categories of every sickness and disease known to man? You know, medical science says there's only 39 lists, 39 books that everything's written in. We've got 39 lists of all your sicknesses, not 40. Well, didn't you think Jesus knew that? Hell, hallelujah, when he said, with his stripes you're healed, why didn't he take 40? Why did he take 39? Because there's only 39 lists. Cancer's in one. Tuberculosis is in one. Leukemia is in one. But only 39 lists. But Jesus said, with my stripes, you are healed. You are made whole. So that covers your case. Amen. You know, if you remind Jesus of one scripture that covers your case, he will heal you. If you say, Lord, your word says, by your stripes I am healed, Remind Jesus of his word. He will come to your house and he'll heal you. If you worship God long enough and loud enough and strong enough, Jesus will come to your house. Amen. Oh, worship him long enough and loud enough and strong enough, Jesus will come to your house and he'll heal you everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt, praise God. And so the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5, he was wounded, pierced through for my transgressions. He was bruised for mine iniquities. He was bruised for us and for our iniquities. Hallelujah. Think about it. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes and wounds I am healed. Praise God. 
And then the word of the Lord in Psalms 91, 16. With long life, he will satisfy me and he will show me his salvation. Hallelujah. He'll show me uh, his salvation. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, that the Lord will give us long life and he will satisfy us if we will follow the Lord and keep his commandments and go to church and do the things that's right, keep his word, hallelujah. You know, obedience is very beautiful. But God said he wants us to be obedient to his word and to his Holy Spirit. And in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and the word. He said, the word healed me and delivered me from all my destructions. Praise God. He'll send his word today. You know what it is? It's a rhema word. It's a rhema healing word. Hallelujah. The rhema word is a healing word. Praise God. And so we need to realize that Jesus Christ is our healer and he is our miracle worker. Praise God. He's ready to heal us everywhere that we hurt and everywhere there's a need in our life. Praise God. I want you to understand today that Jesus is ready and willing to help us and to make a way where there is no way. Where there is no way, he will come and make a way. Praise God. Look in your Bible, please. We want to look here and see what the word says in Luke chapter uh, 6 and verse 17. 6, 17. And speaking of Jesus, he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and the great, a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Amen. I want you to know the Lord will heal your sickness and your diseases. Verse 18, And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and the Bible says they were healed. I'm telling you the Lord will heal you. He'll cast out the unclean spirits and everything that's not like him, and he will heal you. Verse 19, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue or power out of him, and he healed them all. You know what I like about this verse is that the power of healing went out of his body, the virtue, the virtue of Jesus. And, and what I like about it is he didn't just heal half of them. He healed them all. You know what I like it? Praise God. When Jesus shows up in the service, everybody gets something. Everybody gets healed. Everybody gets a touch from the Lord from the master's hand. Amen. You know, when the master touches us, it's different. Praise God. You know, a man can touch you. It's one thing. But when God touches you, praise God, it's something different. Praise God. And that's what we need. We need the touch of the master's hand. They had an old violin. They were trying to sell it. Nobody didn't think it was worth much. But isn't it wonderful when the, when the master violinist came along and picked it up and made such beautiful music. Oh, then the bid went high on it. You know why? They could understand, praise God, when the master touched it, there was some beautiful music coming out of that that nobody knew how to do but the master. I'm telling you some things in our life that only the master knows how to bring that beauty out of us and, and bring those things out of us and those, those hidden talents that we have. And we need to use our talents for the Lord, praise God, whatever they may be. Use your talents and God will give you more. Can you say amen? Always remember this, that faith is not nervous. It don't tell time. It don't wear a watch. You and I wear a watch, but uh, faith don't wear a watch. Don't tell time. Not nervous. Why are you so nervous today? Don't be nervous. Give your problems to the Lord. Take it to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, the Lord will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave them there. Remember that faith is full of surprises. Oh, yeah. Oh, faith is full of surprises, all right. You don't know how God's going to help you this week. You don't know what God's going to do for you before this day is over and what God's going to do tomorrow. Hallelujah. Faith is full of surprises. Hallelujah. I like it. I like surprises. How many of you, do you like surprises? Praise God. Well, God's going to surprise you with some healing and blessing. He's going to show up, going to put food on your table and fill your tank full of gas and put new tires on your car and give you a brand new car and give you an abundance, praise God. Somebody said, oh, you mean me? Yeah, I'm talking about you. God wants to bless you. you. You've gone through a dry valley and you've gone through a dry spell and praise God, it's time for you to be blessed. Hallelujah, because there's a wagon load of blessings coming your direction. Hallelujah, praise God. Remember that God watches your faith to see if you're going to change or not. 
And if you don't change, you don't change your confession, your confession will bring your possession. Your confession, what you keep confessing will bring your possession. Remember that. And so you need to keep on and on and on confessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's mine. I got it. And get excited about it. You see, you got to get excited about it. Some people say, thank you, Lord. It's mine. I want it. No, thank you, God. It's mine. I got it. Hallelujah. You got to realize that God has everything. He's got an abundance of help and blessings, and he, he's not lacking in any department, praise God. So God's watching your faith to see if you change. Your request or not. If you don't change your request, God's going to come and give it to you. He's going to come and help you. He's going to come and bless you. God's going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing, such a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it, praise God. And so, Brother Norval Hayes is a great faith teacher, and I heard him say that uh, this man had a, a broken leg, and he, you know, he keep confessing. Lord's healing my broken leg, my crooked leg, my broken leg. And, and, and he'd go to bed and he'd get up and his leg is still crooked and still broken. But he didn't give up. And uh, about the third or fourth night he went to bed, the angel of the Lord came in the middle of the night and he healed that leg. And he got up in the morning he had a brand new leg. He went to bed with it crooked, went to bed with a broken leg, got up in the morning, put it over. He said, wow, something's happened to my leg. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is with us. The Lord, you know, we, we want God to, you know, we want, we want instant. Instant coffee, instant potatoes. We, we want it right this second. You know, we want it our way. We want it right now. But sometimes you've got to wait on the Lord for a day or two or three, see? And, and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And that's wonderful. If you wait on the Lord, God's going to come to your house and going to bless you. If you keep praising the Lord and keep on and on and on and don't give up, God's going to come and bless you. God's the one that's going to come and help you. Say amen. amen. So God watches your faith. And that man got a miracle because he kept calling his legs straight. You've got to keep calling your situation straight now. My marriage straight now. My finances straight now. My bank account full of money, praise God. You've got to keep calling it by faith. That this is the miracle day of the Lord. This is my miracle coming from heaven. Keep calling it. Don't call it the way it is. Call it the way you want it to become. Say amen. amen. I say call it the way you want it to become. You've got to have eyes of faith. You've got to image it. You've got to see the picture of the thing. The picture of the thing is, praise God, the glass is not uh, half empty. It's uh, hallelujah, it's half full. Hallelujah, it's getting on up to full. Hallelujah, not empty. Get the word empty out of your mind and start saying full. Praise God, my cup runneth over. Praise God. And so the Lord wants to let your cup run over. He wants to give you an abundance today. And so I'm just looking to God, praise God, and thanking him that God is a very merciful God and a loving God. And remember this, the battle is the Lord. And he knows where the soft spot is in every problem. It don't matter how big a giant, it don't matter how big the lawyer is, how big this problem is. Uh, you say, well, Brother Jerry, they serve papers to my house. They're going to take all I got, and I ain't got no money. Let me tell you, God has the final word. Hallelujah. And God will come, and God will give you victory and no defeat. I said, God will give you victory and no defeat. Amen. And uh, when it comes time for court, you know what? You say, well, I'm all worried. You go to court. And what happens? Uh, the guy that was coming against you don't even show up. His lawyer don't even show up. And the judge says, well, we're throwing this thing out. You know why? Because God's got the thing, you know, he's got it all. Yeah. And the devil tries to worry and tell you you're going to die and you're going to starve to death. No, you ain't going to starve to death. And uh, when it comes time, praise God, the battle is the Lord. And you go in the courtroom and, and the man that's coming against you, he don't even show up in the courthouse. He don't even call and the judge is mad with him and the judge just throws it out. And he says, uh, well, you know, none of this, all this debt's wiped out. I'll never see this again in my courthouse. I'm telling you, that's what God will do for you. God will get rid of the enemy one way or another. And God, hallelujah, will set your feet a-dancing and give you the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God wants you to have strength. Praise God. God wants you to have joy because... You know, when you got joy, you got strength. That's why the devil tries to attack you and give you sad days, and so you won't go around shouting too much. He wants you sad and down in the mouth, 
Because he don't want you shouting glory, glory. He wants you, oh, poor me. But uh, hallelujah, God wants to give you some wonderful days of healing and victory. And uh, I thank him. I thank him, praise God, that by strong, bold, determined faith that you're going to overcome. Strong, bold, determined faith. You've got to have bold, strong, determined faith. Say amen. amen. I've seen God all over the world heal people. When you travel the world like I do in over 73 nations, you see God show up all the time and heal people, all kinds of healing, all kinds of blood disorders and, and tumors and things falling off of people and legs and arms coming out, praise God. I've seen God do it all. Let me tell you, I've seen God raise the dead. I mean, I've seen God uh, uh, heal people. Amen. One lady was cut in two pieces. God sewed her up right in front of 400 people, and she was co totally healed. She was dead. She got up, praise God, shouting, running all over the place. They were taking her to the morgue. They didn't take her no morgue. They let her go home, praise God, and she shouted and rejoiced. These are things that I have seen. Not that I thought about and read about, things I have seen. When, when you see a woman cut in two pieces, you know, from an accident, and, and, and she's dead, and they're carrying her to the morgue, and come by your service, and God touches her and gives her life again, that's what they call a mighty miracle. That's a mighty miracle. And I've seen God do the impossible. Seen God raise a young woman in Russia, about 21 years old, raised her up from the dead, fell dead in the service. They were going to take her out of the service, but uh, they didn't have to because after I prayed seven minutes, praise God, the spirit of life come back into that woman sitting on the front seat. And I'm telling you, she started breathing, opened her eyes, said, where am I at? What's going on here? That's the miracle power of God. 700 people there all getting disgusted, wanting to leave. They're all wanting to leave because people are dying here. This is spooky, they said. Oh, all of a sudden, nobody wanted to leave. Everybody wanted to get a front seat when they seen that woman get up and praise God ain't dead no more. Did you know Jesus, uh, he's a blind man healer? I seen him heal 400 people in India one night. 400 blind people in front of me. Every one of them blind. They brought them there. And so... Uh, they all got down on their knees and began to thank God for their healing. I began to pray and it had nothing to do with me, folks. It's all about Jesus today. It's not to do with me or you. It's about what King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, is our healer. And as I prayed over those 400 people, the healing of God went in all their eyes at one time. I said, every one of you now has got your healing. I want you to stand to your feet. And all of a sudden, every person there stood up with their hands in the air. Amen. They, they ought to know if they're healed or not. Amen. They're the ones who stood up and said, I got my healing. Woo. I've seen God heal broken ribs, come up in the prayer line. And I prayed for them, didn't even know they had broken ribs. And, and I prayed and the power of God hit them. And then their pastor come up and said, that man, remember my church, he had broken ribs. When you prayed for him, the, the ribs popped back in place. He said, you got brand new ribs. Oh, let me tell you, I don't know how to do it. But I know the man that can. I know the man that will. Praise God. And I'm telling you today, he gives you hope. You know that's something that people need today? People need hope, health, and healing. People need a change and turnaround in their life. There's so much disaster and so many problems, but I know someone, praise God, that has the power. Praise God. Power in the blood of the Lamb. He has power, if we have faith in him, that he will turn things around, praise God. And that, that young woman got up, you know, after praying seven minutes, Shouted and ran all around that place. Not dead any longer, but praise God, healing came back in the young, young woman. We said to the police and to the ambulance, goodbye, we don't need y'all. Standing by the door, they all got and left the ambulance, bye-bye. That woman ran over there, 21 years old, got by her fiancé, they're fixing to get married. He was worried. Man, you ought to have seen that hug-a-thon. Man, they was kissing and hugging. I said, my God, I'm glad he, I'm glad, praise God, she came back to life. I'm telling you, there was, there was a lot of, uh, uh, praise God, uh, a lot of wonderful things happening there. That woman going around and, and hugging people and thanking God. You know what? Jesus is a miracle worker. and He will do a miracle in your house. He do a miracle in your home. You know, the Lord will turn a house into a home, and he'll cause her to be sweet and love and, and all the good things, praise God. God will cause that to happen for you. I want you to turn, please, to John uh, chapter 6. John chapter 6, please. Jesus is our miracle worker. 
John chapter 6, beginning verse number 5, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five small barley loaves, five barley loaves, and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Let them sit down, he said. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them, that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. You know what? They could have seconds and thirds as much as they wanted, because God multiplied. You know anything you put in God's hands becomes more. It becomes multiplication. When you give God a love offering, it becomes multiplication. God will multiply it. And so the Bible says, when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, gather up of the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore they gather them together and fill 12 baskets full. I want you to hear that. They fill 12 baskets full with the baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Let me tell you, there is a miracle worker in the midst of us. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer. Praise God. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that uh, believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. You'll never, never hunger. You'll never thirst if you, if you look to the Lord because he'll make a way. In verse 50, he says, uh, verse 50, hallelujah. He says in the same chapter there, chapter 6 of John, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Let me tell you, this is the, this is the blessed promise and the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. And so the Lord wants to give us bread. He wants to give us miracles. Jesus is the one that walked on the sea. You are not Jesus. You go try to walk on the water and see what happens. You'll fall down in the water. But uh, Jesus can do anything. Now, if Jesus will uh, help you to walk on the water like Peter. If Jesus says, okay, Peter, come, and as long as his eyes is on Jesus, you, you'll walk on the water too. But if you get your eyes off of Jesus, you're sure going to sink. But if Jesus calls you, if Jesus says, come to me, it's going to be all right. You go ahead. You go ahead and walk to Jesus. He'll, he won't let you drown, praise God. You know, I, I, I like it when the Bible says that though you go through the water and through the rivers, because uh, when you're going through it, that means he's already seen ahead of time. You're not going to drown in it. You're not going to drown in it. So aren't you glad with the promises of God, the promises of God in him? Yea and amen. I'm so glad today that, that we have a wonderful Jesus, and, and he always helps us. He makes a way. He is our source of everything, our source. Praise God. You're not man. You look to man, they'll fail you. You call up a man and say, I want you to help me, they'll turn you down. I said, they'll turn you down. But you ask God, he'll help you. You go to God in prayer. Tell God, I need some help. You know what? God will make a way for you where there is no way he'll make a way for you. And so God is only one kind of a God. He's a faith God. Not two or three kinds of gods. And so the word of God is a, a true word. And it's like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. And she said, therefore I say unto you, that what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. This is Mark chapter 11, and we begin reading at verse number 20. 
Mark number 11, beginning verse 20, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, Have faith in God. He didn't say have faith in man. He didn't go say go have faith in all these people here. He said have faith in God. Man will let you down, but God will never let you down. Remember that. God will never let you down. Have faith in God. Only believe. You know what? Those are two powerful words. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Uh, you can get in the negative and you'll fail. Get in the positive and walking with faith on the king's highway and confessing that God's my deliverer, you will come out all right. You will be successful. Don't let the devil put you into a mode of uh, negative thinking, unbelief. Two great things that cause people to fail is fear and unbelief. Fear and unbelief. The devil will come put a, try to put a whole bunch of fear on you. Yeah. Unbelief. Tell you can't make it, can't have it, can't do it. It's all right for somebody else, but not for you. But the word of God is the true word. You know in the Bible, it's recorded 365 times, fear not. I think it's pretty important that for one, for every day of the year, in this Bible it's recorded, fear not. Fear not. There's one for today, one for tomorrow, every day. Isn't it amazing he put 365? Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Fear thou not. The Lord does not want you to get into the mode and to that spirit of fear. Two great spirits in the world. One is, hey amen, the spirit of faith, which puts you over every time, and the spirit of fear. And so if you're into fear, that spirit will surely devour you and cause you to fail and cause you to die. But the spirit of faith will cause you to live and cause you to get healing and cause Jesus to come by your house and bring a special touch on your life and turn things around because you're looking to the, the great I am, the great master, hallelujah. And so, and in the morning, the Bible says, verse 20, Mark 11, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. Peter called to remember and saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Jesus Answered, saith unto them, Have faith in God. There it is. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. There it is. Shall believe that those things which he saith, not prayeth, things that you say out of your mouth, here's your confession, brings your possession. He said, The things that you say, hallelujah, he said, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Not what you prayed, but what you said. Amen. Your confession. What are you confessing with faith? Your, your words have to be mixed with fear, yes. You have to confess it with faith-filled words. You see? You confess with faith-filled words, and your faith-filled words causes the miracle to come from wherever it is, from wherever the miracle is, causes it to come to you right now and to your house and to your needs right this moment. Wherever the miracle is, God knows where it is, and because you're believing will cause it to come from over there, immediately it will come to where you're at. That's the power of faith, that God will bring whatever you need. He will make a way where there's no way. And so have faith in God, only believe. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, everybody say, I'm whosoever. I'm whosoever. That's right. <laughs> you are whosoever. Your name's written right there on that line. And so he's got your name right there, the whosoever. There's your name. There's your name right there, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Well, just start talking to your mountain. I know they think you're crazy and they'll want to put you away. They see you out talking to mountains and trees and rocks. Hey, but Jesus said you can do that. He said you can talk to mountains. You got a mountain in your way, start talking to you. You're coming down. You're not going to hinder me no more. Whatever that mountain is in your life, you're not going to stop me no more. I'm going to be a child of God. I'm going on for Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You got to talk to the mountain and say, Be thou removed. And don't get up like one man did. He'd pray at night and got morning. He said, Oh, it's just like I thought it'd be. Mountain's still there. No, no, don't go around and say the mountain's still there because you got faith to believe that thing's coming down. It may be a couple of days, but don't go around doubting it. 
Just keep believing. Something's going to happen to bring the mountain down and going to cause you to have victory and no defeat. You're going to get victory and no defeat. Jesus said you can have victory and no defeat. Amen? So your mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. The Lord said, don't doubt it in your heart, but believe those things which you say shall come to pass, and he shall have whatever you say. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. While you're praying, believe that you receive them. And the Lord said, you shall have them. You're going to have those blessings. Amen? Amen? And so God wants to help us. He wants us to, to keep on confessing and thanking and praising God. You know, we've got to worship God. Please, God, will you worship. And the favor of God will fall on your house. The favor of God will fall on you. You've got to please God. As a man in Australia, he, offer, he, he, he tells me often that when he has breakfast and he has the plum jelly on the table that we're going to get two things today. We're going to get flavor from the jelly and favor from God. We're going to get flavor and favor. I said, well, them two things is good. If you get favor from God and flavor, God makes more flavor in your food when you eat it when you serve him. Amen. And so God gives you flavor and favor. I like it. Praise God. Amen. And so it's according to thy faith. Say amen. According to thy faith, be it unto you. Look, please, to Mark chapter 10, verse 27. What kind of a God we got? We got a faith God. Mark 10, 27, and Jesus looked upon them, saith. That's what Jesus looking upon them said. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Always remember with God all things are possible. Don't go around thinking maybe it's not going to happen. It shall happen. If Jesus said it, you can take it to the bank. If Jesus said it, it's going to happen. Amen. And so he gives us great promises. Look at Mark 9, 23, please. Mark 9, 23 in your Bible. It's wonderful. Praise God. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe. You know what the problem is today? The Lord keeps telling me where I go that the problem here is a believing problem. You get people to only believe. Oh, there's a lot of doubting going on. A lot of people doubt and pout and do without. Say amen. amen. If you doubt and pout, poor me, feel sad, uh, you'll do without. Because the devil will see that you stay down. But God wants you to encourage yourself. Like David, he said, I encourage myself in the Lord. And so God wants you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise God. Encourage yourself. And uh, love one another. A lot of people are into hate today. That's what's wrong in the world today. There's too much hate between tribes and people of all kinds. Too much hate between this group and that group. But when Jesus comes along and baptizes with a baptism of love and praise God, all of a sudden you love your brother, you love your sister, you give, you, you, you give that whatever you have to help them. You begin to help one another and love one another. Then you become like Christ because God is love. Amen. Amen. And you got to love to be like God. The one said uh, to the Lord, the disciples said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And so God will help your unbelief if you'll tell the Lord to help you today. Amen. Amen. Luke 1, 37. Let's look at Luke, please. This is the word of the Lord here. Luke 1, 37, and uh, says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. With God, uh, with your neighbor, maybe it's impossible. Your friend, maybe impossible. Maybe your banker says no. You go to get a loan and says, no, we can't help you now. Uh, you go to the credit bureau or you try to buy a car. They turn you down to reject you. You know, people hate rejection. But with God, there's no rejection. Praise God. With God, there's no rejection. You know what? The blessings of God are something else. Man will turn you down, but you go to God, you weep and cry. You know there's a, there's a ministry of tears. And when you begin to cry out, God will come to your house. You begin to cry out and say, God, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And all of a sudden, God will come to your house. God will come and help you. Amen? You say, oh, these people all got devils here. You need to take them, Pastor, and you need to counsel these people. They're full of devils. No, I ain't going to counsel people full of devils. I'm going to cast the devil out of them, say amen. amen. I'm going to cast the devil out. You can't counsel devils. 
You know, you go and talk to them, and then they, you get rid of one devil, and they take 10 or 20 more back, and you get some more devils, you know. You get rid of one, here come a whole bunch more. So cast the devil out. The only way you're ever going to start doing better is to cast the devil out. And then you can start over when you get rid of devils and demons, and then you can have a fresh start. And God will help you. Say amen. amen. The Bible says in St. Mark chapter 16, verse 17, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Hey, you can stand on the promises. A lot of people are sitting on the premises today, just sitting around the church grounds, but you can stand on the promise. Amen. The promise of God. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Shall is the most powerful word you can get. Not might, but they shall recover. Praise God. And so we have a rich word today from the Lord. Only believe all things are possible. Praise God. And uh, it's according to thy faith. Amen. According to thy faith. And uh, I'm, I'm glad for what I read in God's word. I'm, I'm glad for this word because it's, it's really rich and powerful. Look at uh, uh, St. Mark chapter 10 and verse 46, please. It's according to thy faith. Not according to your neighbor's faith, but it's according to thy faith. Be it unto you, praise God. According to thy faith. Mark 10, 46. They came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, this, this was his uh, faith crying out. And so if you get like Bartimaeus and you begin to cry louder, that's your, that's your determination. That's your persistence. You know you've got to be persistent and you, you, you've got to be desperate. If you're desperate for a miracle, you'll get a miracle if you're desperate. And you begin to cry out, you see, because, you know, there's a ministry of tears. And the chemist says that a tear is only water, lime, and salt. But, that's not all there is to it. It's a fragment of a broken heart. You see, they don't see that. All they see is the water, lime, and salt of the chemist. But a tear is a fragment of a broken heart, and Jesus comes to heal, to heal broken hearts. He comes to heal broken lives and broken people. Can you say amen? amen. And, uh, and so there's a lesson here to learn, like Bartimaeus. You see, the people around him kept saying, Oh, man, sit down. Be quiet. You know, he was shouting because he, he got one chance in his lifetime to see and he heard Jesus coming down the road. Man, he ain't going to, he's not going to give up on Jesus. He knew there's only one chance I can see in this life. I've been blind, man, and Jesus is coming. Uh-uh, you ain't going to quiet me down. The Bible said he cried the louder. But they, uh, you know, they said, oh, man, you sit down there and respect him and be quiet. Oh, man, what did he do? Man, he got up and cried louder. Oh, Jesus, son of David. He said, go get that man, bring him to me. All them that pushed him down had to help him up. Isn't that amazing? Come on, he wants you now. We've got to take you to the man. The man's come and ask for you now. I tell you, you'll get his attention. If you keep on praying long enough and loud enough and strong enough, you'll get his attention. If you have to, get a ladder, go up on the top of the church. Get up a little higher. If the pulpit and platform ain't high enough, get on top of the church. If that ain't high enough, go get you an airplane, charter a flight. You go up way high in the clouds, get an airplane ticket. You go up there and praise God way up in the clouds. I'm telling you, go up a little higher. Amen. You just be determined that you ain't going to give up. You're going to make it one way or another. I have been determined, man, and I have made it. You know why I have made it? Because I wouldn't take no for an answer. Amen. People think I'm the craziest thing they ever seen, but I win. You know why I win? Because I won't take no for an answer. The only answer I know is with God's help, you can do it. You can have it, praise God. Amen. The devil's got a negative thing he tries to put on people. Sit down, shut up, and be quiet, and, you know, and let your blessing go to somebody else. No, I'm going to take my blessing, praise God. God calls me to go somewhere, and I ain't got no money. I just get up and act like I got it. I just go on down to the travel agency and cut me a ticket. I went down there one day, cut a ticket. The Lord told me to go to Honduras. I went down there, and they cut me a ticket. And then they said, well, how are you going to pay for this? Oh, I said, oh, you know, I, 
Well, I didn't think of it right like that. I got to pay right now, ain't I? I thought I could come back and pick it up in a day or two. Oh, no, you got to pay right now. But the manager was nice to me. He said, look, he said, now, I ain't going to call the police on you. I'm going to give you a week to get the money up. And then he said, we'll see what happens then because we had to pay for this already. He had mercy on me, you see. But I stepped out in boldness like I never seen before. And because I did, they had my ticket waiting. And in a, in a couple of days, I had the money walk back in. Praise God, there wasn't no trouble. I got my tickets already cut. My seat's already a good seat. And I was on my way. Oh, yeah, it was kind of stupid, but I learned a lesson. You know what? We learn some lessons sometimes along the way. But step on out and try it. You don't know what you can do till you try. You don't know. Praise God. You don't know you can go to Russia or not. I've been there 23 times. I didn't know I can go to Russia, praise God, and all these places and be arrested and taken to prison five times in Russia with AK-47 in my sight, and, and uh, they turned me loose. Most I ever stayed in prison in Russia with three hours, man. They said, you'll be here the rest of your life. I go in and say, settle down. You're going to be here the rest of your life. Three hours, man, they come and... You know, they said, you know, there's something strange about you, sir. They said, we don't want you in here. Said, oh, good, I don't want here either. They said, come on, you're free to go, sir. You're free to come out of this prison, praise God. And they took me out there too, man. And on my way out, all the tracks I had, my coat full of these Russian tracks, I began to throw them at all the guards and everybody. And this one guy, he's, uh, you know, he's a dispatcher. He was, he was making faces at me, ah, like that, you know, like he's going crazy. God told him, Jesus loves you. That's all right. You know what? I got the word in there that nobody else can get in that prison. Nobody else couldn't get that word in like I had it in my pocket, man. I gave it to them, man. The other people, they'd keep them outside with all their guns, man. I had the word in there, and I left it in there. Praise God. Amen. And I was free to go. Free to go. Might have been midnight, man. But me and my driver, he was outside on a tree, you know. It was all dark, and they wouldn't give you no ride, no phone call, nothing to rush it. You just go out in the dark and pray, oh, God. And there's my driver sitting up there waiting, praying at night, don't know when I'm going to be released. I go up there, and there's Victor, and they're praying. I said, come on, man, let's go. He said, they made me mad when they took my friend. I said, let's go back up there where the church meeting is going. Man, we went up there, they said, we praying that God release you. And I come back, and them people still on fire for God. We had a bigger fire. I come back, they still shouting because I'm released from prison. Pray God the same night to 1.30 in the morning, we had church, and people got saved. They got saved. Hallelujah. So it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You don't know what you can do till you try. Don't go around thinking negative and, and stuff like that before you see the answer. You know, the devil wants to tell you right, right away there ain't no way you can do this. First thing he wants to tell you is that it's impossible for you to, to do whatever you're trying to do. You know, that's the first thing the devil puts on you is this negative, uh, you know, there's no way you can do it. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Step out and try it. And when you try it, faith kicks in. I said, when you try something, faith kicks in. And then the man says, well, yeah, we'll help you. I got a new car one time. I didn't have no money. I didn't have no down payment or nothing. Now, this is amazing. I mean, you know, I didn't have nothing. I didn't have no credit. I didn't have nothing. I mean, all I was was going to church, and I knew this guy owned this dealership, and he went, he went to church. So I went by the seam, you know. Ask him any way you can help me because I need to get a car. Oh, he said, yeah. He says, oh, yeah. He said, I'm glad to see you, Brother Jerry. He says, you know what? The Lord just spoke to, my, uh, spoke to me now when you come in here. You're supposed to have one of these new cars. I said, yeah. But I said, you know, it takes money. Yeah, but God's got money, he said. You know, he helped my faith. He's the dealer. And he said, God's got money. I said, yeah, but I don't have any. Oh. That's all right. He called up the, the crew in the back and said, he asked me, he said, which one of these cars you want? There's five of them here. Which one of these cars in the showroom do you want? Oh, I said, well, this first one here, this nice red Mercury uh, Marquis looks nice to me, man. This is nice. Uh, he said, men, take this car and take it to the back and prep it. Man, another hour I was out there driving that car down the road on my way, praise God. No down payment, no money, no nothing. Don't tell me God don't have a way and means committee in one. Amen. You might have rules and regulations. Think you've got to go by this rule and this regulation. But if God wants to hand you the keys to a car, he'll give you a brand new car. He's already given me several of them. Oh, yeah. They come to my house and give them to me. I go to some meeting somewhere and they give me a new car. Man, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, your brother Jerry. So what? We're just the same. Same as you are. We just believe. Only believe. 
I could go around and talk negative. Oh, I ain't no way to buy no car. I ain't got no money. I guess I'll always have to go around this old rattle trap. I had this old rattle trap, you know, until I got a hold of faith. I used to have to stop, you know. I was going up to New York and have to buy 24 quarts of oil and carry them in the back of the car. I have to stop every 50 miles and put a quart of oil in. It looked like a freight train going down the road. Woo! They seen the smoke coming out of my car. Here I am with this with white shirt on, trying to get to church, top the hood up, put another quart in, go down the road a few miles, put another quart in. I said, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. Praise God. I tell you, it was something else. I went to church that morning and preached on television. And from that day on, I didn't have to worry about a car. I went up there and preached. And these people said, you need to be at the mission meeting. It's going to happen this week and Tuesday up in Connecticut. Here's a phone number. Call them up. So I, I called them up. I went up there. And I tell you, it was amazing. I went up there by faith. My car, had, uh, the battery went dead on me. I was in a Walmart parking lot. I had to go in and just scrape enough money to get it to buy a cheap battery, try to keep going, hoping I'd have enough gas, got there on empty and no money, didn't know how I'm going to make it, but I made it to the meeting. Thing was smoking. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. Thank you, sir. It's good people around here love you. They bring you water. Amen. Jesus is the water of life, isn't he? Amen. Jesus is the water of life. Amen. Y'all excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. Nothing like a drink from heaven, hallelujah, a drink of the Lord. Well, let me tell you, it's amazing what praising can do. But uh, I went to that meeting, never been there before in my life, believing God for a new car and no payments. I just preached a sermon that morning, you know, about the, how great, wonderful God was up there in Hornell, New York. I preached, you know, and, uh, and so I preached this message, God! is good and he's a God of faith that he will give you anything and then um, you know the assistant pastor followed me out through the kitchen you know where my car was parked and saying goodbye to me he's waiting for me to start up my old car you know it was a rattle trap and uh, and so I go in to start my car up and the man's standing there waving goodbye to me my car won't start and I'm saying rapture now Rapture now, Lord. The man's watching me. And he already said, you're a great man of faith and how wonderful you are. And I said, this car won't start. I said, Jesus, this don't look right. That man's looking and waiting. Don't understand why I ain't cranking this car, why I ain't going yet. But before long, you know, all of a sudden the power of God hit that car and it started up. I said, thank you, Jesus. Goodbye, brother. I'll see you. I did make it. I am a man of faith. And then I get to the preacher's house and they said, I want you to go to this mission meeting. And he said, I was riding in this new car with him, you know. And uh, so they uh, said, we're going to take you out for lunch. I said, boy, this smells good in here. He said, well, you're going to get one of them too. You're going to get a brand new car. I said, oh, yeah, by faith, I'm going to get it. I went to that mission conference, man, and I tell you, I've never seen them people, nothing about them. But I tell you what, God was so good to me. Hallelujah. I only went there to one service. I didn't know the people. They didn't know me. I went there one night. I went on to my hotel room, which they furnished me. And I thought, that's wonderful. They're giving us a limousine, driving the ministers back and to, and giving us free food. And I thought it was all great, you know. And then uh, the next morning, I was going to sleep in because I was a little tired, you know, from all this journey. And the Holy Spirit woke me up and said, get up and go to church now. I said, okay, I believe I will. Yeah, God just woke me up like that. He didn't wake my wife up, so I just let her sleep, and I just real quiet. I went and shaved, and I mean, that's something when I can just slip out of the room, you know. My wife's tired, too. So I said, well, the Lord told me I had to go, so let her rest. And I, and I took out of that room, you know, and, and went down, and I was the last one, just made it. And that was quick for me. I just made it in the last car going over to the church. Praise God, I made it. And I get over there, and the, and the preacher said that uh, he prayed early this morning, and the Lord spoke to him. Early this morning when I come down here to pray. There's a missionary who goes to Russia and think the Lord don't notice his work. That he, he thinks he's never rewarded for all these trips he goes to Russia. That was me. I'm just sitting there listening. And he said, uh, where are you? A thousand people there. A thousand people. And he's looking around. Nobody's standing up. Nobody's saying nothing. And he kept on saying, now there's somebody here that goes to Russia. And uh, where are you? And I finally stood up and said, yeah, I go to Russia, brother. I go for Jesus, that's me. I think sometimes that 
I just go, and it's a lot of hard work, and nobody knows this. He said, but Jesus does. He says, come up here, brother. He said, God told me to give you the keys to a brand new car. If he'd said brand new car first, I don't know how many would have went up, but he didn't say what he wanted. And I went up, and he said, now, uh, we bought this new car to give away during the convention, and uh, God told me that you'd be here. I don't know you, never seen you. You didn't serve us last night, but I don't know nothing about you, but, but God does, and God wants me to give you the keys to a new car. And he said, here, you take these keys, and after church, we'll, we'll get it all signed over to you. Man, I started crying like a baby. I said, Ooh! I said, brother, you don't know what you're doing. Ooh! He said, well, that's what they usually tell me. I don't know what I'm doing. But he, said, <laughs> but he said, I heard from heaven. I heard what Jesus said. Jesus told me to give you this new car free and no payments. I'll tell you, brother, that was a great, rewarding day in my life because my car hardly made it to the service. When I got to that hotel, it was, it was smoking so much that I cut it off about a block before and coaxed it into one spot right in front of me. So nobody, I had that much pride. I didn't want nobody to see that freight train coming in there, all them fancy preachers and that big fancy hotel, you know. I just coaxed it in, got out of my car, went in as a man of faith, you know. Here I am. Just like I'm driving a car, don't smoke, or you know how I mean. It just... You don't want people to see how bad off you are, you know. You barely made it to the place, had to put a battery in on the way. You, you hardly could make it there. But I'll tell you, after that, I made it fine, man. I smelt that new car smell all the way back to Pennsylvania from Connecticut. Glory to God. And I was shouting all praises all the way. I tell you, it was something else. I tell you, it was amazing how God worked that out. I went back to the church, and it was on a Wednesday night, and the pastor said, uh, yeah, I told him I got this new car today. He said, now tell me again how you got this car. I took him and his wife and me and me and my wife and him and his wife, the pastor, you know, and we, we got in the car and up we went around. He said, take us for a ride, man. We took him about 10 miles, you know. He said, tell me again how you got this car. I said, by faith, brother. He said, I think I'm going to be a faith man after this. I think I'm going to get me one by faith. And you know what? In a few weeks he had one by faith, glory to God. You can have anything by believing God. You may not understand it, but God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. And he will work in your house, in your marriage, in your finances. He'll give you money. I'm going to tell you, God will give you more money than you can ever work for. You can work every day of your life and sweat and end up still ain't got nothing. But God can give you more money and put more money in your hand because he's God and wants to bless you than all this living by the flesh and doing what man wants. God will open the windows of heaven for you. I've had people, I've had people time and time again to write me big checks. You know why they did it? Because the Holy Ghost said do it. I said the Holy Ghost said do it. Maybe somebody watching this telecast today want to help my ministry, you know, or you want to help the ministry here, you know, praise God, Jesus is Lord. You, you help them. You, you help our ministry. You, you do what the Holy Ghost tells you. And whatever God says write a check for, praise God, you do it. If it's a million dollars, hey, that's great. A million? Oh, yeah. A million? You spell it M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Glory to God. Oh, brother, you're going crazy now, ain't you? Oh, no. I thought the man was crazy tonight. He said, come up and pray for him. I went and prayed for him. He wrote me a check for $10,000. I thought I was going to faint that night. Wouldn't you faint? You went and prayed for somebody and give you a check for $10,000? I just called my wife on the phone. I said, you write a check for all them bills. She thought I was, I think, a little crazy, you know. Oh, what you want me to write a check for? I said, because I got blessed. Oh, you got blessed that much? Oh, yeah. I got blessed that much, $10,000. So I know you're going to take me out and eat that steak now, glory to God. Hallelujah. Ha! You've been promising me you're going to take me now. Oh, yeah, praise God. Let me tell you, God will make a way where there ain't no way. You can pay all them bills. Don't owe nobody nothing, glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's called a ministry of faith. Believing, yeah. trusting God, the promises of God in him, yea and amen. Yeah, and amen. You got to get in the word of God. You got to get in the promises of God. And uh, God will bless you too. Yeah. I'm not just talking about blessing me. He'll bless you. But how did I go around the world like I have? By faith. Somebody said, who books you? I said, God does. Amen. I said, but I mean who? who? I said, God does. <laughs> I said, God books you. You know, God makes a way for you where there's no way. But you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Know that God's the one that's going to help you. He's the one that's going to see you through. I said God's the one that's going to see you through and he's going to bring you out. Going to pull you out of the deep miry clay and make a way where there's no way. God is the source and the resource. Again and again, he's your source and your resource. That means he's going to keep giving to you more and more. Your source for now, a resource for later, that means he keeps, resource means he's going to keep bringing more sources and keep on going and keep blessing your ministry and keep putting you over with victory and no defeat. How would you go to 73 nations if it wasn't for God? I'm working full-time for God. Amen. Somebody said, yeah, I work part-time for him. Well, why don't you get out there on a limb and go working full-time for him? Oh, I wish I could, brother. Yeah, I could go around saying I wish I could too. You know, we all can go around saying I wish I could go full-time for God. Man, I'd love to. I tell you, once God sees that kind of faith, I'm telling you, it's tough, but I tell you, God will look down and see that kind of faith. He begins to bless you, brother. He begins to call people to give cars to you and homes to you and everything else. You know why my home's paid? Somebody gave it to me and gave me cars and cars. Gave me one, praise God, 27th December last year. It's right outside. You can have a look at it. I'm telling you, it's free. I don't have to pay for it. There ain't no payment. I'm telling you, brother, God opens the windows of heaven and pours you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it. Glory to God. Oh, do you think God will do that for me, brother Jerry? Oh, yeah, it ain't easy, though. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not easy. Somebody says, is that easy, Brother Jerry, to go full-time like that? No, it ain't easy. That's why a lot of people don't do it right off because, you know what? It, 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 you've got to trust God. I mean, you really got to get down to praying, and, and, and you're going to go through some tests and trials while you're trying to get to that place. You, you're going to be tested, I'll tell you right now. Devil, devil don't want you. Devil don't want me on the full-time like I am on the front line. Uh-uh. He don't, he don't want nobody doing this. He wants you to be down and out. He wants you to pout and doubt and do without. But God wants to bless you through and through. Make a way for you where there's no way. But when God calls you, he knows what he's doing. When God puts ministry in you, it's for a purpose and a reason. And there's a time. Remember that God's own time, he's never late. Amen. And there's a timing of God for your ministry. It'll come forth if you keep going in that direction. You've got to go in the direction God's telling you to go. Don't take a different direction. Don't take a sidetrack. If God says, I want you to prepare to be a minister and go here and there and do this, then you prepare. Maybe slow at first, but you'll get there if you keep going in that direction. You've got to follow Jesus all the way. Hand in hand we walk with Jesus. Not behind him, not ahead of him, but the songwriter says, hand in hand we walk each day. Hallelujah. All along the way. Some people are too far behind him, they can't hear his voice, and they're too far ahead of him. You've got to go right with him, right in his will. If it's slow ministry at first and it's a one-day ministry and one person, that's okay. You say, I only got one person I can minister to a neighbor. I got two people. I, got, I only can preach one time. There's no open doors. I tell you what, if you'll preach where God opens a door, pretty soon another door opens. God taught me there's multiplication in ministry, multiplication. If you, if you preach in one church, that preacher will call the neighbor church and down the road and over another state. And then they call you, can you come over here to this state? All right. Well, you got the money? No. But do like I do. I believe God. And brother, when I got over to there and preached after that, it multiplied two or three more churches. And then I got multiplied to more churches. And now I got thousands of churches I can go to all over the world. Pray, praise God. There ain't, there's no shortage of places I can go. I got homes and countries everywhere all over the world I can go and stay with people. You know why? Because I didn't take no for an answer. I said, God's called me. And you know what? I was, I was determined. I sold Coke cans and bottles and Got tomatoes in baskets for, you know, basket full of tomatoes. I go down there in Florida, you know, and this guy let me pick them, you know, for two or three dollars a basket, you know, for a bushel basket back then. And I get out and try to sell them for a dollar or two, you know. But I got enough money to go preach, man. I tell you, I, I, I'd sit there until I could sell enough to go get a tank of gas, and I'll go to that church and preach to give me a love off. Man, I was on my way to some more churches, and I had money. I just kept on going. I didn't take no for an answer. Somebody said, I wouldn't go through all that. I told one man, he said, oh, I wouldn't do all that, Brother Jerry. He said, yeah, how do you go over there and rush in these places and you say you ain't got no money, you just go over there by faith? I said, yeah. And I go by faith and I said, God takes care of you. Amen. Oh, well, he says, you know, I never do that. And this man says, he said, I'd always make sure I had enough money. I said, that's good if you got enough, but if you ain't. I said, God's got money where you don't even know he's got it. But if, uh, but if God guides, he provides. I said, where God guides, he provides. 
And so I found that, you know, and I went to Honduras, you know, and I only had, I only had uh, you know, $20 in my pocket, and I'm catching an airplane, you know. I'm catching this night flight out of Philadelphia, fly all night, and, uh, and, and just trusting God, you know. I only got $20, and I got to be there 30 days, and I'm supposed to be paying for all my food and, and all this stuff, and I, I only got $20, but I didn't say, oh, I'm going to find excuses now why I can't go because... I only got $20. Oh, no, I didn't look for excuses. I just took my $20 and got on the airplane. And my wife, she had another lady from the church, you know, riding with her. That's a miracle how God took care of her. She's out there in Philadelphia Airport coming back to Berwick. It's a long journey there, several hours. And they got out there on a turnpike, and uh, the lights shut off at night and couldn't see where they're going. They had to pull off the side of the road. Didn't have no AAA or nobody, nobody to help us, you know. And, and there she was. We thought the car was all right. But uh, her and her and, uh, uh, and the sister with her, they, they begin to pray. They begin to pray and talk to God. Whether you believe this or not. They prayed and talked to God, all right, right there on the side of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And the lights come on bright, Amen. bright as ever. And they drove them all the way to Berg for about an hour or two, about a couple of hours. And when they pulled into the sister's house, the lights went out and wouldn't come back on. God got them home that night, and the lights shined. I was on the airplane flying, didn't have no money to do it, but God let the lights shine. The next day, they were able to get the alternator fixed or whatever it was. Let me tell you, God will come through for you and make a way for you. I wrote a song, God will come through for you, be it night or day. God will make a way for you. Amen. I believe what I preach, Amen. and I preach what I believe. And this is the word of the Lord, that God will make a way for you. And I went to Honduras, trusting God for 30 days. Didn't know how I'm going to make it. Man, I went places to preach. Floods and waterfalls and everything coming across the road and washed the roads out. Couldn't even call back home for about a week or more, maybe 10 days. Went up on a mountain every day, tried to call, and the phones wouldn't work. Had a phone booth there, had a thing there, the lady operator in the booth over there, and she'd grind it away and... Tell you, go try now and see if anybody answers. And she'd try, come back the next day, keep trying for a week, 10 days. Finally got back to America after about 10 days. Back in them days, it wasn't like it is today. We got it made now, how we got cell phone, can call the world, and satellite communication. But back then, it was really rough if you was in Honduras trying to call America. So I finally got through after maybe 10 days. My wife just trusted God all the time that I'm all right. There was no way I could call her. But it's amazing. Here I went to that trip. Only $20. But they kept taking up an offer and didn't tell me. The night before I left, after 30 days, the pastor come to me and said, we took up $2,800 in our money, and that's two for one. That's $1,400 American dollars. You didn't know it. And we went down to the Red Lobster Corporation here in Honduras, and they had that much American money. They let us have it, and here it is in an envelope. $1,400 U.S. dollars. We come bring you an offering, Brother Jerry. I was so happy because the devil's on my back saying you're going home broke. You came broke. You ain't got nothing. You come broke. You're going back broke. Oh, no. It, 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 I didn't go back like I came in Jesus' name. I went by faith. And that night I got $1,400. Amen. I tell you, I was happy because you know what? Hallelujah. I got on that plane the next day, and my God made a way where there wasn't no way. Amen. I got on that plane, and uh, the engine cut off. And then a few seconds later, it cut back on. They said, you know, we could have crashed. I said, yeah, my God was with us. It might have shut off a little bit, but it kicked right back in. Glory to God. We just kept on going. And when I got in Miami, I called my wife up and said, hey, I'm uh, on my way. You know what? I only had a, I only had a return trip ticket to, uh, to Miami, not to Pennsylvania, because I didn't have enough money. But they, they said you had to have one at least back to the United States or they wouldn't have let me go overseas. See, back then you had to ha have a return to America. So that's, that's what, you know, that's the faith that I had, I guess. So I got one back to America. But I didn't have it from there. I just figured somehow something's going to happen, and it did. As soon as I got to Miami Airport, I walked up to Eastern Airlines back then, and I just said, uh, I want a ticket to Pennsylvania. He said, okay, $145 or something. It was cheap. He said, okay, it leaves in an hour and a half. I said, good. Okay, give me a ticket. I got a ticket. Called my wife. Okay, I'm coming home. He said, the car's broke down, this and that. I said, don't worry. When I get home, we've got plenty of money now. Car's going to be fixed. Praise God. Got $1,400. Now I took out the airline ticket, and uh, when I get home, I'm going to take you out to eat, and we'll fix that car. 
Our bills are all going to be paid. I tell you, I was a happy little fella. But that's when I started out. And I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know how my wife was going to make it home. But you know what? We're trusting God. I went out in some island and preached in Honduras. And I went, you know, I had, there was only 100, 100 families in that island. 100 families. But a bunch of them all came out there and filled the church. The windows were full all around that church and dedicated a couple of babies. And we just had revival there, you know. Oh, the devil tried to kill me. Got out of the boat, you know, and, and uh, got up on the wooden planks. And they were so rotten, you know, and I was so heavy. The planks just broke. And there I was getting wet. My feet fell right down in the, in, in the lake, in the river, in the, <laughs> right down in the, in the ocean. <laughs> but they pulled me right out of it. And I said, thank you, Lord. Bruised my arm a little bit, but... Glory to God, I got well. <laughs> I said, glory to God, I'm moving on with Jesus. I ain't taking no for an answer. Amen. And because I came through that one day, God said, when you could have quit and should have quit, you could have quit, you could have, maybe you should have, but you didn't. And he said, because you didn't quit, you passed my test. And he said, now you passed my test to a higher level of faith. And because you did that, you're in a new level with me. And I'm going to use you mightily to heal the nations and take you to the world. And that's why I'm going to 73 nations. Because I started out with them hard places and hard knocks. Didn't know how I was going to make it. But I made it. And, and God gave me money and helped me and made a way when there wasn't a way. And one day when we got to this other island, my wife was home needing money. And I arrived at this island and the pastor came and said, uh, yeah, I said, a lady, uh, the Lord woke up a vice president of our bank last night and told her she had to give you this, you know, this $300 in American funds, not on the bank in Honduras, but on our Miami account. I said, praise God. And uh, he said, how you want it made out? I said, make it out to my wife. I'm going to send it to America to her. Okay, he said, we got a good brother going to fly to her tomorrow. You can trust him. He'll mail it for you in Louisiana and New Orleans. I said, okay. I put it in the envelope and so we got her, he put a stamp on it, mailed it on to my wife. She got in a couple of days longer. And I'm telling you, she was so happy getting that $300. She's home, didn't have no money. And she was home, you know. And, I, and then when I got home, I brought 1400 I tell you, God opened the windows of heaven. I tell you, we were walking by faith, didn't know how we are going to make it. But I tell you, we made it because God made a way, brother. And I'm telling you, God will always make a way. Where there is no way, he's a way maker. Amen. He's a way maker. Say amen. amen. I said, say Amen. He's my healer, and I have seen God take me and bring me, take me to the nations. I've seen God do uh, miracles like no other can do. I've seen God heal people. I've seen God heal cancer. Oh, that's something to see God heal, to heal uh, this lady glory of cancer. Now, that was something, you know. They told her she only had a week to live. And her and her husband, you know, they came by our house there in Burke, and they said, we know you're, you and your wife are faith people. And said, uh, and my wife, you know, she, she quoted all these scriptures and had a whole list of them, healing scriptures. By my stripes you are healed, and I'll not allow any plague to come nigh your dwelling. And she was Gloria there full of cancer and told her she's got just maybe seven days. And they told her to order the flowers and tell all the family and order the preacher and get everything in order because you're going to die because you're eating up with cancer. Told her husband, sorry, it's bad news. They come by and we prayed. It had nothing to do with us but Jesus. And laser surgery of the Holy Ghost healed that woman as she Hallelujah. fell in the, in the spirit on our living room floor and lay there for 20 minutes. The laser surgery of God zapped all the cancer out of her. They went back to Danville to Guy Singer the next day, the same doctor, the same machine. They went back there, and the doctor said, Well, I, I'm sorry to tell you, he said, but, but we're not getting no report on this machine. And he said, I'm sure that, um, that our report was right yesterday, but. He said, there's something wrong with our machine that needs to be recalibrated. He said, my machine ain't working today. And we got to call in the technicians to fix my machine. There's something wrong with it. Oh, he said, well, all right. Well, do you know anybody else has a new cancer machine? Oh, yeah, doctor down the street here. We'll call him Dr. Smith. Yeah, you just got a new machine in. I'll call him up. They called him up and said, yeah, bring him over here. So they went down to another doctor, had a brand new multi-million dollar machine, could see all cancer, and they put glory on it, couldn't find no cancer. He said, well, if you had it, there ain't none on you now. There's a brand new machine that don't show no cancer. Oh, let me tell you, by his stripes I'm healed. Let me tell you, God don't have to have no reason to do it, it's just he's God. And God can zap cancer out of you in three seconds or less. And he can touch your blood condition and your financial situation. You know, God can give you a million dollars in your hand by 10 o'clock tomorrow. I read in the Bible, by the time the sun gets hot tomorrow, that God's going to send help to you. 
Let me tell you, before noontime tomorrow, God will send help to you if you only believe, if you only get into this believing business. Get the doubting sign down and put a new sign up by your business. We're in the believing business here, brother. You've got to believe. You've got to believe and you shall receive. You're not supposed to understand it all and figure it all out. I don't understand either. I don't understand how a cow can eat green grass and, you know, and, and give yellow cheese and white milk and all this stuff. You know, I don't understand it, but he, they do it. And praise God, there's a lot I don't understand about God, but I know he's a miracle worker. And I, I tell you, God healed me when I was just a baby, three years old, and I was having convulsions, you know, eight in one night. And I, and I turned purple in the face. And my mom thought I was going to die, you know, because I had eight, eight convulsions in one night. And she said, every one looked like that. So last year, you're going right out. Said the preacher came from the church full of the Holy Ghost on him after revival and laid hands on you. And said, as he prayed, said, the power of God hit you. And you turned over in your sleep and smiled. Three years old. And she said, from that night to this, you've never had another attack of asthma. And you never had a problem breathing. From there to then, hallelujah, to now. And I'm telling you, my God is a healer if you're three years old if you're, or if you're 100 years old. It don't matter with God. Praise God. Amen. If you say, I'm 70, if I'm 80, I got this pain, I got that, I got authorized, whatever. I'm telling you, God's still an authorized healer. He's a healer of eyesight, yes. of hearing problems. Yes. The devil tried to give me a hearing problem. Amen. I went to a, a doctor here a while back. He checked me. He said, ain't nothing wrong with your hearing. You had a little wax in it, but he said, I cleaned that out for you. He said, you got perfect hearing. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. The devil said, oh, you got a problem with your feet? I said, check my feet, doc. All right. He took something down there, and he feel that, and man. He checked me all around. Oh, he said, you ain't got nothing wrong with your feet either. It ain't nothing wrong with you, he said. Amen. I'm telling you, it's something, brother. It's something how the devil will try. And, and, and he's talking about my hearing, you know. He said, well, the doctor said, uh, well, he said, you know, oh, yeah, he said, they'll, they'll try to sell you a hearing aid. <laughs> oh, he said, you go down there where they sell hearing aids. Oh, you say you're 67 years old. They'll say, oh, yeah, you need a hearing aid, all right. Yeah, you little need a hearing aid. Oh, he said, they'll try to sell you one, all right. <laughs> that was the hearing doctor. He said, they'll try to sell you one. They'll, they'll try to put one on you, see. But there ain't nothing wrong with your hearing. If you want to buy a hearing aid, you can, but you don't need one. But see, the devil, you know, the enemy will try to sell you anything, whether you need it or not. You got good insurance, you know. You got good insurance and money in your pocket. These doctors, and some of them will try. I'm not. I'm not throwing on doctors because there's good doctors, and uh, thank God for them. But uh, if we didn't have them, some of us would be in trouble if we didn't have good doctors. Come on, say, man, I'm not throwing off on doctors because there's a lot of good doctors probably watching my program today here, and I thank God for you. And a lot of doctors have helped me, and they've. Uh, and they prayed for me and given me donations for the ministry. And I thank God for people that support the ministry. So you keep on supporting our ministry and keep sending donations in and, and keep helping the, the program right here, praise God, at uh, WBN uh, TV. Praise God. And so um, this is the Word uh, uh, Broadcasting Network, and you keep on helping them here. And, and you go on our website, jerryfitzgerald.org, and and uh, there's a place you can give, and you help us out because we're going to keep going. We're not going. We're 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 in this for the long haul. We're not going to stop. I got I've got my mind made up that uh, 